Welcome to the Leadernomics Show and today I have with me Scott Ragsdale, who's Chairman of Naseeba. Uh, Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to have you here. Great to be here. You, you know, you. You, you have this amazingly interesting life. Uh, you, you know, in school you did some interesting things. Your first job was relatively interesting. Uh, uh, and, and ultimately you set up your own business, Naseeba. Mm. Uh, tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got to where you got to. Well, I guess my, I'm, I'm an American. I, I went to. I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and I went to. Uh, I went to a boarding school. I was a swimmer. Mm. And I swam. Uh, f that was my big focus. I went to a special boarding school for swimming. Okay. I uh, lived in a dorm. So did you uh, always like swimming? Uh, I, I didn't like it. I used it as a as a way to to get, to get into a good university. Okay. I went to then I went to Berkeley, University okay. of California, Berkeley. Right. And then after uh, America, I moved over to Asia. So I lived in. I lived in 13 countries. I've traveled to 94 countries. So right after university, you went out to Asia? Yes. It's, uh, the day after my last exam, I moved to Japan. Well, was there a reason why you wanted to be I in wanted to. I wanted to learn Japanese and, and Chinese. And uh, my, my whole dream was to become a, a businessman mm. in Asia. OK. You know you, you know, you speak about university, right? You did some very interesting things there. One was to pro, you know, run the Republicans uh, Club. Is that <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was the, the president of the College Republicans at That's Berkeley. Right. Uh, and at the time, because Berkeley is, is known, or there's a myth that Berkeley is a very liberal university. Right. Okay. But it, it isn't liberal because it's 50% Asian. Okay. There's a, a big <laughs> a big percentage of Hispanic. Hispanics are very conservative. Mm. Uh, Asians are very conservative. And uh, I stumbled into becoming the president of the College Republican well, Club. Was that because you had any Republican ties, or no? I, I was. Uh, I, w I wanted to be rich, and okay. Republicans are rich. I well, was they are. <laughs> and that was the the whole. F driving force nothing I knew nothing about politics okay uh, and but I looked at it as we purely marketing and we, we developed and marketed and developed and it became the number two club in all of America mm. it's, a, it's a great story I, n I had no idea what I was doing it was just a, it was a good marketing uh, but, but it's interesting because it started the whole marketing angle in your life right yeah in I guess I've it always wasn't been a stepping stone for you in terms of where you are today no my uh, my father is a, is a, a salesman okay he had a, a, an insurance agency and uh, I guess it, it's in my genes, and uh, I uh, I got into sales that way. Okay, probably. so that, well, that was your first job uh, as an insurance salesman. No, probably the first job was being the president of College Republicans. <laughs> that was really a full-time job. Okay, I had I had to travel all over. I had to raise money for the mm. club. I had to so that was that was a a job per mm. se. Mm. Um, and, and then how did you end up in? So you ended up in Japan. Yeah, um, and what happened then? Uh, in Japan, I went to, to I went to study Japanese, and I also went on something called the JET program, which is a Japanese exchange teaching program sponsored by the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, I spent four years studying Japanese, and then I, I passed EQ, which is the highest level of the Japanese proficiency exam. Mm -hmm. um, and then I wanted to get a job, so I moved to Tokyo and got a, a sales job. Okay, and and, uh, and what happened there? Uh, my, I got a sales job. Okay, this is this is a is a good story. Everyone can relate to it. I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. uh, my first day, they they really sold me on this. Is, you have to take this job. There's there's 30 people that want it. They really made it look exclusive. Mm -hmm. So I took the job, and my first day, I go into. There's no training. I had no training whatsoever, and they put me on a phone. So there I am sitting in a in a a real dirty, musty office in Tokyo with a, a, a bunch of real un, uh, underachieving people mm. and I'm uh, essentially sitting in a call center. And I remember thinking to myself, gosh, I went to one of America's best universities. <laughs> I speak fluent Japanese and I'm working in a call center. And I had to because I, my rent was $1,000. My basic salary was $1,000. So I had to sell. So I, I got very, very lucky and I sold that first week. Mm. And because I was able to sell that first week, uh, in an office that wasn't performing at all, it, it gave me a, an opportunity, and mm. the opportunity was there, and I, and I seized it. Mm. So and so then you progressed relatively then quickly I in the organization? Then I progressed very quickly. Within, I think, six months, I was the, the sales director of the office, the, the, the boss of the office. Uh, within I don't, 13 months, I was promoted to general manager. And then uh, 18 months later, I was sent to open up China. I mm. became the managing director for Greater China. Mm. And, and that translated to a bunch of places that you went to ultimately, right? Yeah. Uh, then, then you set up Naseeba, right? How, how did that come about? I mean, what, what was there a vision there? Or? Nah, well, I, I, I went there. There's a big period of my life 13 years ago where I made a lot of money. Uh, 
and I was spoiled, I was lazy, I thought I was more important than mm. I was. Mm. And you know, I'm, I, I was uh, the number one sales leader at the previous company I worked at. And that gave me this arrogance that I thought I knew everything. I thought I knew more than my boss. I thought I knew more than the chairman. Uh, and you know, I reflect on that, I'm, and I'm, 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 I'm ashamed of that, that person, but I learned from it. Uh, what, what happened was, right, uh, bef right after September 11th, I was promoted to become the, the CEO of Asia for mm -hmm. my previous company. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily believe in the role, and I, I, uh, I thought I could do it better. And uh, I had a, 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 a falling out with my chairman, and essentially, I, I quit. Uh, I was sort of pushed out, but I quit. And I quit a, a, a very big uh, package, a, a great job, a company that took great care of me, and I quit because I, w I just became uh, mm -hmm. spoiled and arrogant, mm -hmm. uncontrollably, uh, uncontrollable to right. manage. So you learned a lot. I mean, was, were there some, those were some in interesting lessons that you learned from that? Yeah, I, I learned from it because I reflected. A lot of people don't reflect. Mm, that's a true. lot of people make mistakes and they blame. You know, I could blame my previous employer. I could say I did this for him. You know, I, I was definitely the, the, the number one performer, not just in sales, but in developing other salespeople. Mm. Uh, he took great care of me. Uh, then we had a fallout and then I didn't get paid for three months. And I could, I could focus on the negatives or I could reflect on myself and say, you know, I was wrong. Uh, and what did I learn from that? Mm. So there's a, there's a lot of people that unfortunately in our world today mm, were true. victims. Everyone's a victim. It's, no one, it's never your fault. Mm. It's never my fault. Yeah. But in reality, it is uh, my actions resulted in whatever unfortunate situation I faced. Oh, that's true. So I, I reflected on that and I, and I learned. And by complete chance, I, was, I, I didn't want to start my own company. But because I, I was naive, all right, uh, and, and I was very angry, uh, at my my previous employer for essentially kind of you know, I got I got screwed out of some money a lot of money and uh, I got very angry so I, I said uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna set up my own company it was completely by chance okay. and uh, another one uh, Sophie Larey uh, was really the founder the, who's the CEO of Nasiba mm. mm. okay so, so you know if you talk about uh, this whole Nasiba right, and what you're doing there uh, you've grown this significantly over the not, not couple of years you know what would you say is the secret to your success <laughs> the, there, there's a, a poster that, I, I, uh, that is on my wall, and it's a poster I saw when I, was in, in, uh, when I was in university. It is of a man standing on top of a mountain, mm. and it says the man at the top of the mountain didn't fall there. Mm. And I would say whatever success we've had, because I'm still far from the, the summit of my mountain, right. it's really leading by example. Uh, and just focusing on the the immediate task at mm -hmm. hand, mm -hmm. and not focusing on the negatives. Yeah. And you know, uh, you make that that that, uh, that illustration kind of is interesting because a lot of people think success is immediate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I can be a Mark Zuckerberg and immediately yeah. be a billionaire. But uh, it seemed, I mean, even in your case, it's it's a progression of sorts, and it takes a hard work. Hey, and I tell you, we start. I started NASA with forty two thousand euros. I took the company public uh, four years later for a value of 33 million, mm. okay? I sold 40% of the company, made a, a chunk of money, uh, and then focused on the next step of expanding it. The economic crisis came mm. and completely pushed us down the mountain. Yep. And I had to witness uh, my share price go from, although the, the, the company was doing very well, yep. uh, because everyone was liquidating yep. uh, their, their holdings, yep. Yep. Uh, our share price went from 15 to 13 to five to 80 cents. Wow. So uh, I was, it, was hum it was really humbling. Uh, but instead of focusing on the negative, yeah. I focused on the positive and I right. bought the company back right. and delisted it from the, the, stock, exchange. the stock exchange. Wow. Uh, and then we're just focused on right now, my, my core business is the emerging markets. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a business information company focused only on the emerging markets. Mm. So, you know, it's interesting that you've grown a company from zero to, you know, you and your team have grown it from scratch to, to this huge organization today. Um, what, what do you think are some uh, tips that you may want to give entrepreneurs well, or would-be entrepreneurs? Well, I, uh, again, we're, we are, uh, we, st we have 100, we're 230 employees. We're not huge. Mm -hmm. We're not uh, no, yeah. superstar I mean, successful. Yeah, okay, yeah. we are doing something mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we have a long way to go. That's right. I don't want to sit here in front of you and, and, and really act like uh, I know I'm a, I'm a perfect businessman. Mm. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a salesman. Mm. I'm a, a, a potentially positive, motivational speaker, or mm. not speaker, but uh, some, someone that has, uh, I'm very positive, yeah. you know, uh, and uh, I, I like to try and do everything right. to the best of my ability. And so you know, you're speaking of positive, I mean, one of the things that you do a lot of is to take part in very challenging, enduring uh, sports, uh, running the marathon, swimming, um, and you seem to be out there. Are you, are you out to break records, or, you know, no, why, do you, no, no, why, no. why do you take part in such events? Well, I, for example, a, a couple of years ago, I swam uh, the English Channel. Yeah. And I did that because I, I, I read an, a newspaper article about someone that tried mm. and how they failed. Mm. And it talked about the English Channel has uh, less than 30% success rate. Mm. And I wondered, gosh, I wonder if I can do that. Mm. And then my, my daughter, my stepdaughter, was, had, a, had a couple loser friends in her life. And I was trying to kind of shake her and, 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 and show her about you know, seizing life and yeah, doing yeah, things and, yeah. and going out there and really living it to mm, its fullest. Mm. So I, I got into it, I trained and, and, uh, and I swam the English Channel. And then you did seven... And then I did uh, last year for my 40th birthday. Right. It was the 40th year of the Emirates yep. uh, and I'm, I'm based in Dubai yep. uh, for a, a challenge and in, in partnership with the government. I did a, an Ironman triathlon. It's officially it was an iron distance triathlon uh, every day for seven days across the seven Emirates. That's right. And that was a, that was a great experience because I, I had, uh, over the, the year, I had some setbacks. I mm. had both my knees operated on. I had a, a major bike accident uh, f 10 days before. So it was a, it was a, it was a, a good experience mm. uh, overcoming obstacles, you know, on, on any goals we have. Sometimes we face setbacks, but we have to just pers persevere mm. and make it happen. And mm. that's uh, it was a good it was a good experience. Yeah. So I made that happen. And, and, and that's also important for entrepreneurs, right? Whenever f you face setbacks and obstacles, to keep persevering and keep going on, right? Yeah. There's uh, there's a lot of people out there that want to be entrepreneurs, but there's unfortunately this world we live in today where everybody they want success and they want it right now. If I don't get it right now, screw it. I'll find something else to want. That's just not the way the world works. Mm. Gosh. If I if I, I look back on all of the times that uh, I I've, I've done well and then mm. suddenly something bad happens and I fell down I just have to get back up and keep climbing. It's just like that quote: mm. "The man at the top of the mountain didn't fall there." And if you have uh, any entrepreneurs that are watching this or that have a dream or have a goal that they want to go after, they have to understand: you know, there's going to be bad days. There's going to be great days, mm. but you're going to have bad days. You're going to you're going to have days where you're going to have an employee screw you, okay, excuse my language, a, a, an employee steal from you. You're going to have a best friend d betray you. I, I've seen it all. But at the end of the day, you just got to stay focused on where it is you want to go mm -hmm. and uh, not let anything get in the way of that. And, and also, I, I think it's very, very important to focus on the positive. For the past mm -hmm. 10 years of my life, I try to be as positive as possible, when, even when people steal from me. I've had, I've had someone steal a million U.S. dollars in cash from me. Now, I, I, there's probably not many watch, watchers of this video that, have, that know anyone that's had a million dollars stolen from by my best friend, mm -hmm. uh, a guy in China. And that's something where I could, I could spend the rest of my life thinking, oh my gosh, I got betrayed by Thomas, mm -hmm. and Thomas just stole from me. And I could go on and on. Instead, I look and I reflect and I think, what did I learn from the experience? How can this make me stronger mm -hmm. to ensure that it never happens again? So reflection is very, very important. And unfortunately, the world we live in today, yeah. th everyone is a victim. Uh, and no one is reflecting. Yeah. It's never, it's never my fault. And you know? we're so busy not having enough time to reflect to sometimes. Ah, <laughs> it's so busy. It's, it's an People excuse are, though. You know, it's an excuse. <laughs> everyone's yep. so busy. Yep. You know, I'm no. so busy. Everyone's, everyone's busy. Yeah. You know? That's true. Well, one final question. I mean, if I'm a college grad who's just graduating from university and I'm trying to you know, live life to the fullest and you know, grow and become the best I can be, what advice would you give me? Don't live on Facebook. <laughs> All right? The whole world is living on Facebook. And I, I wonder, you know, I, I wonder how many decisions are being made by so, the number of likes something is getting. Mm. It, is, it is a complete waste of time, mm. all right? So my advice is uh, don't waste your time on Facebook. Uh, go out uh, and whatever proverbial mountain you're going to try and climb, remember, sometimes that climb is going to go great. Mm. You're going you're gonna to climb fast. You're going to get high up on the mountain. And then one day you're going to fall. 
but you just have to get back up and you have to keep climbing. Keep climbing. Fabulous. So I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think back, I have, I'm far from where I want to go, okay? And, I, and I'm honored to be here. It's great. I appreciate it. But uh, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, as, I, as I joke with my friends, I'm just a white guy trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> I've been speaking to Scott Ragsdale from Nasibar. Scott, thank you for being on our hey, show. Thank Appreciate you. It was an honor.